Okay, we're down to the very end of the course, and it's time for last-minute tips and chapter insights uh, for Psych 200. So what I'm going to do in this um, little video is to quickly go over uh, the Morling Caldwell Impellent books. I'm going to focus mostly on Morling in terms of things that you want to know in there, and then give you general guidelines regarding Caldwell and Pallant. Um Also, there's a question on the um, take-home final regarding classifying effect sizes. So... Uh, if you recall, I did send out an announcement on this some time ago. Look in your announcements box. It'll say classifying effect sizes and gives a link to different types of effect sizes. That will probably be helpful for you in that answer. But also take a look at um, what's reported in Morling uh, and Caldwell as well in terms of classifying effect sizes. So we're going to focus on chapters 8, 9, 12, and 13. Chapter 7 showed up as a reading assigned in the second half of the course, but actually you read that in the first half of the course. Uh, so there's not going to be anything on chapter 7, so you can strike that off the uh, list. Um, and then here are the chapters for uh, that would be represented on the final. Okay, Okay. so let's look at, start with chapter 8 for Morling. This is the chapter on bivariate correlational research. And what I'm going to do here is essentially put down onto the slide here a lot of questions that you should be asking yourself. Now, I think it's fair to say that these are the kinds of questions that could show, show up in the short answer section. So if you knew the answers to these kinds of questions, I think you'd be in pretty good shape. Um, that doesn't mean that other questions couldn't show up. And you should definitely be looking at the definitions of terms, concepts, and so forth that is provided under the resources uh, heading on the Canvas site for uh, uh, study resources for the final. But the things you really need to know, okay, the re things you really need to know, you need to know what a scatter plot is. All right, Cohen's going to have guidelines for evaluating strengths of association based on R. There's a little table in the chapter. You should be familiar with that table. Uh, you should know the different kinds of correlations, the circumstances in which they're used. We talked about this in class uh, um, based on whether or not the var variables are continuous, categorical. Okay, um, there's a big section on construct validity, statistical validity, and the importance of effect size. You should be really familiar with that section. Table 8.5 in particular is something you should know well um, because that really sums up uh, many of the points within the chapter and gives a good overview of uh, what kinds of um, analyses and effects are important to know. Um, why are larger effect sizes important? You know, we talk about you know, significant p-values, but actually large effect sizes, uh, there's something to that. And so why is a large effect size important? What does it tell you? Okay. Um, know the various threats in interpreting correlations. Uh, we talked about this in class. Outliers, restricted range, are two in particular. Um, and then Morley's going to talk about three causal criteria for Im implying or inferring um, uh, causality from correlational data. Uh, you should take a look at those criteria and know those, okay? And there's a discussion about what is a moderating variable, and you should you should know those. Okay, what moderating variables are, especially as opposed to mediating variables, which are introduced in the next chapter. We talked about moderating and mediating variables in the beginning of the course. Shows up again here as we get into bivariate correlations and regression. So chapter 9 then moves into sort of a multivariate model in regression in particular. Um, it's going to talk a lot about longitudinal studies. So know the characteristics of longitudinal studies. There's different types of studies, cross lag and so forth that you're going to want to want to know. So know the different variations. Um, what does it mean to control for a third variable? How does regression help you do that? Okay, that's a kind of question that could show up on the final. Okay, um, so um, know the sort of the strategy there with regression analysis. Uh, know the difference between unstandardized beta coefficients and standardized beta coefficients. We've, we've gone over that a number of times now, you know, within class. So make sure that you're familiar with those. And then talk a little bit about uh, why does regression not establish causation. Remember, regression is still base, basically a correlational approach. Now, there are some pretty sophisticated sophisticated ways that we can employ regression to try to get to and understand causation, but, you know, you need to understand that it's still not a substitute for good experimental research that can show, uh, to some degree, causation better. Uh, what is mediation? How is it different from uh, moderation or a moderator? Okay, chapter 12, experiments with two independent variables. The one to really take away from this is know what interaction effects are. Know it when you see it. If I put a graph up 
in the final you should be able to identify the interaction effect you don't need to know the names okay there's a whole bunch of different types of interaction effects I'm not interested that you know all the the names for them um, but you should be able to know the difference between a main effect and interaction effect how many main effects you're getting depending upon the number of factors in a study how many interaction effects um, why why does Morley talk about interactions showing moderator effects I mean what what is it about that that's important and why would an interaction show a moderator effect potentially uh, why are interactions more important than main effects that's a really important question um, you know we talk a little bit in class about you know if you get an interaction effect um, it really um, affects the way you interpret the main effects right that interaction effect is really important to see and it may have some very strong theoretical meaning right in fact it may be the prediction in your study that you'll get an interaction effect so um, to know the answer to this so there's a there's a section in the chapter that talks about that chapter 13 then talks about quasi experimental designs, small end designs know what's meant by a quasi experimental design what are the different types like a non equivalent control group design when would you use these designs um, they're usually used when there are what we call data constraints in other words there's only so many ways that you can collect data and you may not have the ability to um, conduct a controlled experiment to answer the question that you're interested in okay so be able to speak to that a little bit uh, chapter 13 also talks about interrupted time series designs uh, what are the chief characteristics of those those are often used in economics um, where you're looking at uh, data over many time intervals over long periods of time um, but it can also be used for short periods of time as well so know what those are um, know the notion of by the way autocorrelation what does autocorrelation mean that's discussed in the chapter then there's a whole bunch of threats to um, experimental conclusions and with these designs in particular so maturation threats history threats regression to the mean what do we mean by the term attrition attrition basically means dropping out from a study okay why would that pose a problem for conclusions uh, in these kinds of studies or really any ex uh, experimental study as well and then know the difference between multiple baseline and reversal designs when would you use these designs that's kind of a tricky question in the sense that behaviorists will always use these designs they have a, a general they generally despise uh, statistics uh, because statistics are based on group level data okay whereas behaviorists are mostly interested in watching process changes in single individuals or organisms over time and so their argument has been that um, especially reversal designs um, are truly the only experimental way to study behavior um, so if you've taken a learning class I'm sure you've heard this argument you know before and there's a lot of merit to it in a lot of ways where um, you know you're looking only at directly observable behavior okay so but know the difference between multiple baseline and reversal designs okay now Caldwell chapters we have 9 10 11 and 12 and these chapters take us up into analysis of variance nonparametrics correlation and regression they the chapters didn't get as far as I'd like them to go in other words there was nothing really on factorial designs in Caldwell and I think that that's kind of a shortcoming of the book but it did take you to analysis of variance and rather than go through every single chapter I want to just give you some tips on how to study this what you don't need to know for the in-class midterm you don't need to know the formulas that are in Caldwell I'm not going to be asking you about formulas and you don't have to worry about doing calculations uh, uh, on the exam so uh, that should uh, you should breathe a little sigh of relief just uh, in that regard now what are the things you should focus on in Caldwell everything that is conceptual okay so the final is largely a test of knowledge of terms and definitions your conceptual understanding less interested in your knowledge of mathematical computations so for example you might we need we need to know that you know what an F ratio is and what it tells you what is it a ratio of it's a ratio of the between treatment variance over the within treatment variance um, but you don't have to compute it okay I'm not going to have you go through and actually compute uh, sums of squares and so forth now you might have to do um, an ANOVA table okay so be familiar with those ANOVA tables okay that showed up on one of the quizzes could very well show up on 
the final. So if you struggled with that on the quiz, make sure that you understand what that ANOVA table is. Okay, that's the only thing that you might have to compute really on this exam. You won't need a computer or a, a calculator to do it, but um, just be aware of what the table is. Okay. Uh, for example, you might um, be able to tell me what Tukey's uh, HSD test um, does, but you're not going to have to actually compute Q and all of uh, all the stats involved in two keys okay so also know how to express all experimental and null hypotheses I might ask you okay what's the experimental hypothesis how is it expressed in a one-way repeated measures ANOVA how would you write that out what would be the alternative hypothesis what's the null okay um, also just as an aside if you're struggling for uh, with doing those correlation calculations uh, for the take-home final see Caldwell chapter 12 because Caldwell is going to walk you through an entire example. Okay, uh, shows how to calculate the z-scores, do the cross products, sum of cross products, and then the actual uh, correlation. Okay, and then Palant. Uh, ag again, in Palant, Palant's great for working with SPSS, but this in-class final is really not about how to use SPSS. There is, there will be um, questions regarding how to interpret output. Okay, but what I want you to do to focus on in the Palant chapters are the concepts, generally speaking, that uh, are discussed prior to the example analysis in the chapter. So uh, focus on those concepts that are presented before the actual example. Okay, you should know how to interpret the output for all of the stats that we've been running. Okay, there's going to be at least one question on the final in which you will be given SPSS output and asked to interpret and write up the results in correct APA format. So you're going to have to be able to look at those tables, okay, and make sure you interpret them correctly. On Wawa 8, the one thing that I saw sort of repeatedly was that when you move from a um, within subjects design to a mixed design, there was a tendency to still interpret the within subjects table. Keep in mind that that within subjects table is only for one way within subjects designs. Once you move to a mixed design, then there's really two tables you need to interpret. One is the multivariate test table, okay, which will include your within subjects factor, but also includes the interaction effect. And then the other one is the, uh, the table of between subjects effects. Okay, so make sure that you're, you're interpreting the right tables. Okay, so if you get output in there, you're going to want to be able to look at it, be able to look at the right tables, write up a, an APA formatted uh, a sentence in particular with the correct uh, results. And there's going to be at least one question in the midterm that presents to you a research question. You're going to have to write up a really quick research plan. Okay, the variables will be given to you, and then you just have to say, okay, here's what I do. Okay, and, and say it's going to be this kind of design, and I'll run this kind of um, statistical analysis. And it needs to make sense. <laughs> okay, so, so, um, so there'll be at least one question like that um, on the final. And that's pretty much it. Okay, that's the uh, quick and dirty in terms of last second tips for preparing for the final. Um, please look at the list of concept terms and definitions that's provided under study resources on the uh, Canvas site. That's going to be probably your best resource. Um, and if you have any questions as we get closer and closer, please holler to me, okay? So I will be checking my text messaging all night tonight um, and try to get back to you as quickly as I can. If you have any issues with the take home, let me know, okay? But you're almost there and you're going to do great, okay? So um, good luck and I wish you nothing but the best and hope you have a super final.